Welcome back to the channel, guys. So as you can see in the title, today we're talking about the best high yield savings accounts. And we're not just gonna go through the top rated. I actually want to understand the pros and cons of a high yield savings account over a traditional savings account. I strongly believe that understanding the, the why behind what you're doing is fundamental in making the proper decisions. So we're gonna discuss that, but stay tuned because after I wanna give you guys my regular portfolio update, you can see how my investment journey is doing. But then at the end, I also wanna share this portfolio I found on Reddit. This is a $7 million portfolio, but the thing that was most shocking to me is how simple it is. It only has two holdings so if you guys want to see what that's all about make sure you stay tuned to the end and if you enjoy i always appreciate a like subscribe for more and let's do this so when it comes to a high yield savings account the entire point of this financial instrument is a safe location to park your money have it be liquid and generate a competitive interest rate and when coming down to the list of pros of a high yield savings account this is essentially what we're going to see so the interest rate is competitive we have fdic insurance up to a quarter million dollars so it's pretty simple most people know what a savings account is but there are some cons associated with a high yield savings account. The big one is that the APY or the interest rate itself is variable and at any given time it can go up or down. And this rate is loosely based off of the federal funds rate. As I'm sure you guys are all aware of right now, the Fed is currently increasing rates at a very fast pace and is projected to stay high around 4.5% for at least throughout the next year. And the Fed is doing this to help combat inflation. But eventually, my guess is after inflation cools, the Fed will once again begin to loosen up their monetary policy, slash interest rates, and eventually we might get back down to near zero. And of course, at that point, the APY you receive on a high yield savings account is gonna be a lot less than it is right now. The next major con of this financial instrument is that it's not a good long-term solution for your money. A savings account is gonna to struggle to keep up with inflation, which is currently around 7%, and the stock market historically over long periods of time, even though it has more risk, it's gonna be the better option if you wanna generate the highest return possible. Another con we have here is even though this is a liquid way to hold on to some money in the short term, hopefully, it's not completely liquid because after a certain amount of withdrawals, usually around five per month, you do tend to hit some kind of a uh, fee. And the final negative here is that most high yield savings accounts are associated with strictly online banks. And that's really not a bad thing in and of itself. Most of us do our banking online these days, but that does mean that if you're currently looking for a good high yield savings account, another parallel search you can do is simply the best online banks. And in this category, the bank I kept coming back to over and over again is Ally Bank. We can see this website here, money.com, says that Ally Bank for the year 2022 was the best overall online bank. And they cited things like high yields. I should give the disclaimer that personally, I've never used Ally Bank, but if I was in the market for something like this, I probably would use this company and they are FDIC insured. In terms of their fees, they have very minimal costs associated with this product. And the current, again, subject to change, APY is 3%. Now I do wanna give you guys another option. And this is actually from M1 Finance, a company that I do currently do business with. So if you guys follow the channel, you know that I use their investment services, but M1 as a company is trying to expand into all aspects of finance. They offer lending, a checking account, credit card, and coming out in 2023, they're gonna have a high yield savings account with an APY currently of around four and a half percent. But this is only if you have M1 Plus, which is like $125 a year service. So I'm totally jazzed to see what this is all about when it comes out in 2023. But right now, the checking account actually offers a 3% APY with 1% cash back on their Visa card. And if we log into my M1 account, I actually did sign up for their checking account not too long ago. And we can see that on November 30th, they paid me interest of $2.41 on a balance of less than $1,000. Okay, but let's do a quick portfolio update. So over the past one week, my portfolio is up 0.98%. In comparison to that, the market is up 1.14%. So we are lagging the market by a little bit, but it's very close. And we gotta remember that the cash flow in my portfolio is significantly more than that of the market. In fact, over the past week, we have $30 of dividends. Now my technology assets did the best up 1.85%. 
if we click into this, we can see the exact breakdown. So VGT is up 1.51% and BST 2.3%. My value assets are up 0.77%. And the breakdown is as following, SCHD 0.73 and DIVO 0.81. And on November 30th, just a couple days ago, both DIVO and BST paid me a cash dividend of nearly $28 and $50 each. Together, that $77 deposit went back into buying more DIVO and Jeppy. So that's the latest with my portfolio. But as promised, I want to share with you guys this epic $7.6 million portfolio I came across on Reddit. This portfolio is so massive that in one day, it appreciated almost $300,000 in value. But the thing I found most shocking about this portfolio isn't the high value of it. Rather, it's the simplicity. There's only two holdings, VOO and VGT. Both of these, of course, are passive index ETFs. VOO is the S&P 500, and VGT is a broad market technology ETF. And this proves that you don't need to have a super overly complicated portfolio to have amazing returns. And I just find stuff like this super motivating, and it only makes me want to grow my portfolio that much more. That's going to do it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.